about this damn game. It's about desire now. Desire. What's up everyone, this week on The Film Room, I'm gonna be taking a quick look at the art of route running. Specifically, we'll study what makes Odell Beckham Jr. one of the league's rising stars so deadly on his release, and how he absolutely smoked the Falcons secondary multiple times in week two. Now for the basics, what is a release? A release is how a receiver gets off the line of scrimmage and gains an advantageous position on a defender in order to better run his route and ideally be in a better position to catch the ball. It's 25% footwork, 25% boxing, and 50% mental awareness. Now let's take a look at Beckham's first release of the day against man coverage. Atlanta's right corner. They don't have their corners switch sides in this defense. It's very similar to Seattle in that way. But their right corner, Robert Alford, is in a press alignment here against Beckham. Now you know it's press and you know it's man because he's slightly shaded inside over Beckham's inside shoulder, which means it's a lot easier for him to defend against an inside release. Again, if you've seen any of my past videos, you know that in man coverage, the number one rule for a corner is don't get beat inside. Now, Alford is shaded inside, and Beckham's going to be running a slant and inside breaking route. That means that Beckham has some work to do here if he's going to try to get Alford out of position enough to give up that inside break. There's two ways you can do that against press. You can either fake an outside release, try to get their hips turned toward the sideline, and then break underneath them to cross their face. Some receiver coaches call that a three-step block. Or another option, you release hard inside with no wasted steps, ride the cornerback towards the boundary, and then snap it off inside. Now, Odell's physical, but he's not exactly Julio Jones here. His biggest asset is quickness, not strength. So he opts to use that three-step block where he can use that quickness rather than just trying to outmuscle the corner like Julio or Megatron or Dez would typically do. Now watch the release. His inside foot is always his lead foot, and his first step is just bringing that rear foot up to get square hips. Being square means that he can release in either direction because his hips can go either direction. He's not tied down by one foot being in front of the other. It helps to keep his route ambiguous, so the corner never really knows what he's going to do. After squaring his hips, he releases towards the boundary, tries to really drive upfield for those next few steps to get Alford to bite, which he does. And Alford's big mistake here is trying to jam with his outside hand. For starters, if you lunge with your outside hand, it makes it really difficult for you to then get your hips around and slide into the receiver's hip pocket on deeper routes. You have to keep that outside hand free and not torqued around to the receiver so you can turn your own body and point your hips downfield. Secondly, if you press a receiver's outside shoulder with your inside hand as you slide into his pocket, that doubles as a way to grab and slingshot yourself into position if he then doubles his release back inside. If you don't have a point of contact on his torso, you have nothing to grab onto to counter your own momentum and get back into position. Either you get that hand in a spot where you can slingshot yourself, or you're roasted. Thirdly, Alford actually goes for the jam with both hands here, which violates the one arm is longer than two principle. I've talked about that when breaking down pass rushes in the past, but it applies to corners and receivers as well. Reaching with one arm will always get you an extra inch or two of length compared to reaching with both. Alford lunges with both arms because he's trying to stack and disrupt the release, but Odell gets into his chest first with just one arm. That then makes it extremely easy for Beckham to then just swat away the outside hand and work back inside across his face to get a first down on the slant. If Alford used proper technique with his hands here, he might have been able to grab Odell as he worked inside and break that up. Atlanta's other, and in my opinion, elite corner, Desmond Trufant, did just that when Beckham ran the exact same route with the exact same release in the fourth quarter. Again, first step squares the hips, next few steps drives hard upfield, Trufant turns his hips outside towards the boundary, and Beckham tries to work back inside underneath him. The difference here, though, is that Trufant only jammed with that inside hand, so as Beckham released back inside, he had a place to grab and slingshot himself back into position to take away the slant. Same route, same release, same everything. This is just the difference between a good corner going against an elite receiver and an elite corner going against an elite receiver. It's a very subtle technical difference, but it matters a lot. Now, second quarter, Odell against Alford again, 
Same exact release as the slant from the first quarter, squares the hips, drives upfield, but instead of breaking it off inside, he's running the go route up the sideline. Two different routes, but they look exactly the same off the line of scrimmage. Alford again throws that outside hand out there to check him, but immediately pulls it down and switches to pressing with his inside hand so he can turn those hips downfield. I like that he caught himself on this one and corrected it before Beckham made him pay for it. Now one thing about ODB is his speed and quickness are remarkable, everybody knows that, but he's not the biggest guy in the world. Like I said before, he's not going to physically dominate a press corner like Julio and Megatron can't. That's not his game. So when Alford stacks his release here, the same thing he did before on the slant, he gets into his chest and Odell is just not quite physical enough to power through that. It's just a product of his frame, nothing he can do about it. At this point, the route's over. Alford won the jam and Beckham's only shot is to try to just use his speed to get over the top anyway, but these are two guys who ran almost identical times at the combine. Beckham ran 4-4-3, Alford ran 4-3-9. You're not going to run away from him if he's already stacked on top of you because he's too fast. That's why they took him. So this play is essentially over because Alford's a freak athlete, just as freaky as Beckham is. However, Alford's shown his cards now. Beckham has run two routes on the exact same release, and Alford played it the exact same way both times. One play later on third and nine, he sells again the exact same route off the exact same release. Square the hips, drive hard upfield towards the boundary, Alford again goes for the stack, which is exactly what Beckham wants. He keeps driving hard to push Alford upfield, then snaps it off at the marker and makes the grab for the first down. Now if you notice here, Eli and Beckham were on the same page with this one. It was a timing route based on how they saw Alford was playing the release. The ball is out before Beckham's even looking for it, and it's placed perfectly. Remember when I said that winning a release and winning a route was 50% mental? That's the 50% recognizing a tendency and technique and exploiting it at the best possible time. Later in the second quarter, this is Beckham's first snap against Alford and Press Man since that last first down. It's third and seven again, and again, the Giants want to hit Beckham on that curl route right at the sticks to convert it. Alford's already seen the progression on the release though, from the slant to the go to the curl. Same release, three different routes. Beckham doesn't want Alford to be sitting on that curl again, so he doubles his release to make it look brand new. In slow motion, you can see that he adds another two-step stutter to the top of the release to switch things up, which gets Alford to flip his hips because now he's not sure if he's going inside or outside because he hasn't seen this release before. Odell's hips are still square after that second stutter, but Alford is now turned inside. Beckham releases outside. Alford can't get a hand on him, so he's in panic mode right now. To him, this is a new route and a new release. His instinct is to stack over the top of it because he doesn't have any safety help. And again, that's exactly what Beckham wants. He wants him to stack it. He snaps it off at the marker again, gets the first down, and a whole lot more when he breaks the tackle. Same route as before, but switching up that release by just one stutter step helped keep Alford off balance and playing catch up all the way through the route. That's all it took, just that one extra stutter. That's it. A few snaps later, this was the final progression of the release and my favorite of the day. Double release to flash inside, break outside, snap it off like you're running the curl again, and then accelerate upfield off the double move for hopefully a big play. Now they've been showing this curl to Alford all day long and it's been working. So this is the look they want. This is the look they've been building for. Show him the curl one more time, get him to bite on it, and then beat him over the top. Same release. Same route, mostly. It's just a natural progression in play calling as tendencies from the defense get revealed. Ironically though, Alford gets turned around so bad on the double release that when he goes back into panic mode again and goes for the stack, he's so far ahead of Odell that when he bites on the curl, he only loses enough ground to put him right back in Beckham's hip pocket anyway, and it gets broken up. Again, he runs 4-3-9, so unless you already got a step on him, you're not gonna beat him over the top. If he turned inside towards the boundary and mirrored the curl in the same way that he did before, he probably would have bitten harder and Beckham might have gotten free. But that's just how it goes sometimes. You spend the whole two quarters building up to one perfect play call and it goes down the tubes. Inadvertently, really. Great awareness by Alford and even better speed, obviously. And I can't blame the play call or blame the route. This just happens sometimes. Now, strangely enough, Beckham got the vast majority of his statistics in the first half. The Giants made a clear effort to get him the ball, even throwing it to him when he was surrounded by three zone defenders. Eli put it right where it needed to be to beat the coverage. 
But to me, the fact that they were even willing to drive this ball in there in the first place was a signal that they were going to get Odell the ball at all costs. Even on this long touchdown, the Falcons dropped eight guys into coverage and the linebackers made the right read underneath. Eli was staring Beckham down, but he knew all he had to do was just elevate the ball just enough to get it over the linebackers and Beckham would have a shot, which is exactly what he did. He was rewarded with Beckham then burning everyone's pursuit angles and taking it to the house. Dangerous, dangerous throw, but Manning was willing to do it because he knew that Beckham could make the play. The second half though, they used him on a lot of clear out routes and underneath stuff, and to be honest, they kind of forgot to use him until the final drive of the day. If they targeted Beckham in the second half like they did in the first, he easily would have broken 200 yards. And that's not a slight against Robert Alford. He performed as admirably as could be expected from him against you know an elite receiver in the NFL. But the types of routes that Beckham ran were specifically tailored to beat his coverage style. The only time Beckham actually won on a deep ball, despite his yardage total, was when he ran a fade out of the slot, which was against Atlanta's nickel corner, Phillip Adams, not even against Alford or Trufant. That was one catch for 26 yards. His other six catches and 120 yards came on a slant, three curls, a flare out to the flat, and a post that he took 67 yards for the touchdown. None of those six passes traveled more than 15 yards in the air, and that's indicative of the type of defense that Atlanta plays. They have so much speed at corner, two guys that run sub four fours, that you're probably not gonna beat them over the top when they're in man. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that you're not gonna beat them over the top when they're in man. Underneath and on the sidelines, however, they're vulnerable. That's just a product of playing in a single high safety defense. Beckham repeatedly beat Alford at the boundary simply because Alford was always trying to stack against the deep ball. That's what he does, and those curls were the best route to counter that style of play. In addition, since the deep ball was so hard to come by for the Giants, Eli exploited the zones underneath over and over again, and his running backs caught 10 passes for almost like 90 yards. Lance Dunbar, the running back for the Cowboys, just last week in week three, caught 10 passes for 100 yards. That's the best place to attack this defense. Short throws, methodically moving the chains, and with a great route running receiver who can win at the release and come back to the ball underneath. If the Giants followed that formula in the second half like they did in the first, they might have won that game. Then again, with how dominant Matt Ryan and Julio Jones have been, eh, maybe not. Who knows? What I do know is this. Odell Beckham is not overrated. He's not some media darling that is being arbitrarily hyped up. This guy is for real. He's fast, he's quick, he's got spectacular hands, and now hopefully you see what I'm saying when I say his route running is impeccable as well. You can tell that he studies his opponents and that he works with Eli Manning to exploit their tendencies at every chance they can. That is what separates good from great. That is what separates the flashes in the pan from the Hall of Famers. As long as he has a quarterback that can get him the ball, Odell Beckham is here to stay for a long, long time. All right, that's all I got for today. Feel free to like and subscribe for more Film Room content as often as I can get it out there. I don't know who my next subject will be, but hopefully you like that one too. Until then, later.